Today I'll be showing you how to set up port forwarding. So now, why would you need to do this? Well, maybe you're setting up a server that you want to open up to the outside world. And why exactly is port forwarding necessary to do that? Well, let me explain. In the average home network setup, the internet service provider will assign the customer's Wi-Fi router a single public IP address on the internet. And then what the router does is it shares that single public IP address among all the devices connected to its Wi-Fi network by assigning each device on the Wi-Fi network a private IP address that is only valid for communications within the network. And that's how Wi-Fi routers can form a network among the devices connected to your Wi-Fi network. And then what your router does when a device wants to start a conversation with a server on the internet, what it'll do is use the source port chosen by your device to know which device to forward the outside server's responses to. And by the way, the source port that your device uses is completely independent from the destination port that the server is actually listening on. So for our purposes, we don't really need to worry about source ports. We only need to really worry about the destination port for our server, or in simplistic terms, the port that our server application is listening on. But what you do need to know is, well, this works fine for the average user whose devices are just establishing connections with random servers on the internet. Where this approach fails is when you have a server and an outside device wants to establish a connection with your server. In that case, how is your router supposed to know which device that incoming connection is for? So what happens is, by default, your router will simply discard it, simply because it doesn't know where to send it. What a port forwarding rule does is it creates a port mapping that ties a destination port to your server's local IP address. So when an outside device tries to contact your server on that port that your server application is listening on, your router will know to forward that incoming connection to your server and a conversation can be established with that outside device. A common practical use case for home users is when they wanna set up a Minecraft server that they want to be accessible from outside their home network. I actually made a video on how to set up a Minecraft server on your local network, which you can go check out here. But the main thing you need to know is a comment that I get quite a bit on that video is comments along the lines of, how can my friend from another part of the world connect to my server? That is a common case where you're gonna need to set up port forwarding. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. But just be forewarned, that the exact layout of your router settings will change depending on which router you have. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to look around your router settings to figure out how exactly to set up port forwarding on yours, but it's pretty much the same idea. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so now I'm in my web browser and I wanna get into my router settings. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is go into my settings on my own computer and then check my network information. And then what I'm looking for is the gateway address, which in my case is called default route, but it's the same idea. And it's 192.168.100.1. And I'm gonna copy that and paste it into my browser. Now for most of you, it's probably gonna be 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1, but I kind of have a bit of a weird setup, but it's not too much different from what the average person has. But anyway, I'm gonna go punch that into my browser, and of course you will need to be connected to your Wi-Fi network for this to work. And then here it's gonna ask us for the admin password of the router. Now this is not the same as your Wi-Fi password that you used to get on your Wi-Fi network. This is the password that you'd use to get into your router settings. Now if you don't know what this is, either you will have chosen this while you set up your router, or you just left it at the default, which in the latter case, it should be listed in your router's manual, or if you have an ISP provided router on your ISP support website, probably under a support page for something like how to change your Wi-Fi password. But anyway, I'm gonna go punch in my router's admin password here. All right, now I'm in my router setup wizard. Now there's generally quite a few settings in here, but what I'm looking for is an option called port forwarding, which on a D-Link router, which is what I have, it's 
kind of hidden under features. Now this is the case where every single router is going to be different, so unfortunately you're going to have to actually go looking for this in your router settings, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. It'll be called port forwarding, but anyway we're going to click on that, and now we're at our port forwarding settings. So now what I'm going to do is go add a rule, and then for local IP, what I'm going to punch into here is if I go back to my computer's Wi-Fi settings here, I can actually find my local IP address. What I'm going to do is go copy that and then paste it in here. It'll generally be something like 192.168.0 or 1. whatever. And then here's where we're going to select our port. So now here I can define a TC port and a UDP port. Now if you're not sure what those are, put simply, these are two different protocols that applications will use to communicate with each other over the internet. Now if you're not sure what protocol an application uses, a good resource for this is this Wikipedia article, which gives you a pretty comprehensive table as to whether a port is TCP or UDP, as well as the default ports for common applications. Like, for example, if you're hosting a Minecraft Java Edition server, the default port for that would be TCP port 25565. And by the way, this is not the same for the Bedrock Edition server. That uses a different port, specifically UDP port 19132. And by the way, the way you'd know is like which one says yes or unofficial under TCP or UDP. Now, if an application has both a TCP and a UDP port, then I would actually forward both TCP and UDP. And by the way, I will have this resource linked in the description. But anyway, for example, if we wanted to open up a Minecraft server to the internet, I would forward TCP port to 5565. And I'm actually using my own computer as an example since I don't really have a Minecraft server that I'm opening up to the internet. And this wouldn't really be useful anyway since that port is not open on my computer's firewall. But anyway, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go click apply. Okay, now this is actually requiring me to enter a name for this rule, so I'm gonna go do that right now. Say, for example, Minecraft server, and then click apply. Now, I actually wouldn't really worry about this schedule if that's in your router's port forwarding settings. But anyway, after we've done that, we wanna make sure to save our settings. Give it a second to kick in. Okay, there you go. Now we've got our port forwarding mapping saved. Now I just wanna say that if you've set up a firewall on your server, then you'll also need to open up that port on your server's firewall for this to actually work. Like for example, if you've enabled UFW, what you're gonna do is do sudo UFW allow 25565 slash TCP. And then what this command would do is tell UFW to add a rule to allow TCP port 25565 through the firewall. Now, if you're not sure which protocol an application is using, then what I do is just remove this slash TCP altogether and then allow for both TCP and UDP. And of course, this port number will change depending on what server you're running. Like in this case, I'm using the example of a Minecraft server. If you've configured your server to use some other port than the default, then you're gonna have to use that custom port for both your port forwarding rule and your firewall rule, if applicable. But anyway, I also do wanna say that yes, you can also apply this to UDP by basically after the slash swapping out TCP with UDP. But that is how to create a port forwarding rule. Now, if this is just a temporary Minecraft server that you have open to play with friends for a few hours, then once you've close a server, make sure to delete that port forwarding mapping, especially if your server does not have a static IP, just to prevent that port from being forwarded to some other device that happens to get that IP. And then of course we have to remember to save that once we're done, just to make sure our settings apply. And now I'm going to go back to my router's homepage, then go to my connected clients here. Now this again will look different depending on which router you're using, but it's pretty much the same idea across the board. This basically gives me a list of all the devices that I have connected to my local network. And then I'm going to go to the listing for my laptop, which for some reason is listed as a different local IP than what's showing up in my Wi-Fi configuration. I'm really not sure why that is, but whatever. I do want to show you the reserve IP function, which is on a lot of routers. Now again, this is something that's going to be different for every router, but it's the same idea across the board. What I'm going to do is enable this, and then I can basically reserve an IP address for this computer here by just typing it in here and then click save. And then either your router will do this automatically, or you need to 
disconnect your device and then reconnect it for that change to take effect. What your router will do depends on the router. But basically, if you're setting up a permanent server, this ensures that one, the local IP address assigned to it will never change, and two, your server's local IP address will never get handed out by DHCP to any other device, no matter what. Now, I don't actually want to reserve an IP for this laptop because it's not really necessary in my case, so I'm not going to click save, but if you do that, then this setting would actually apply. And that concludes my video on how to set up port forwarding. Now, before I wrap things up, in case this did not work for you, I'm actually going to get into a little bit of troubleshooting, starting off with, is your server accessible by devices on your local network? If it's not, something on your server itself is at fault. Could be a server firewall blocking incoming connections, in which case you need to open up the port that your application is listening in on, on your server. Maybe you've changed the port that the server application listens on from the default, in which case you need to use that custom port to establish a connection. So you're gonna to need to change your port forwarding rule and any firewall rules, if applicable, to reflect that. Or it could even just be something as simple as you don't have your server on or your server application is not running. And in that case, it should be pretty obvious how to fix that one. So I shouldn't need to explain it. Now, if your server can be accessed by devices on your local network, but not by outside devices on the public internet, then it's something either at your router level or at your ISP level that's causing the issues. The first thing I do is check your port forwarding mappings just to make sure that you've set up everything correctly. If you've checked everything and you're 100% sure that everything is set up correctly, then it's probably your ISP that's at fault. So what could be happening is that your ISP could be blocking the port that you're using, especially if it's one of the well-known ports used for very common applications like web servers and email servers, in which case you're gonna to need to call up your ISP and ask to see if they can unblock that port for your connection. Or if you don't wanna go through all that hassle or you're unsuccessful going that route, then just use a different port. Now, another scenario could be that your ISP has put you on a carrier grade NAT, which is basically the same thing as what your router does with devices on your Wi-Fi network, except that's done at the ISP level to share a single public IP address with multiple customers. In that case, you're gonna need to call up your ISP and ask them for a dedicated public IP address just for you. Now, some ISPs will actually offer this at no additional charge. However, be prepared to pay extra for it, if it's even offered at all. In fact, with some ISPs, you may even have to upgrade to a business class connection, which would increase your monthly bill substantially. Now, an easy way to check if you're behind a CGNAT implementation is to check the WAN IP address of your router or its externally facing IP address. And this is not the same as the IP address that you use to get into your router settings. And you check this against what's listed on whatismyipaddress.com, which will be linked in the description. But basically it shows your public IP address. If both of these numbers match, your router is connected directly to the public internet and you should have no problems port forwarding. However, if it's something different than what's shown on whatismyipaddress.com, I would first ask yourself, is your router behind another router? And this setup is actually more common than you might think. Typically this occurs when the ISP has issued a customer one of those modem router comms combos and the customer hooks up their own router to the combo unit for speed and reliability. In that case, what happens is your router that all your devices connect to is on a private network that is established by your ISP's router. In that case, I would get your ISP's router switched to bridge mode, which will essentially disable the router portion of it and get it to act as a modem only which should connect your router directly to the public internet. You might actually need to call up your ISP in order to do this, depending on what ISP you're with. Or another thing you could do is set your router as a DMZ host in your ISP router's settings, which if you don't know what a DMZ host is, DMZ host is basically networking jargon for 
forward all ports, which you generally don't do with a server, but in this case, since it's your router, which is basically meant to be connected to the public internet, it's fine. Basically what forwarding all ports will do is emulate your router being connected directly to the public internet. Now that setting may be abbreviated to DMZ, depending on the router, and it may be even hidden under the firewall settings. Again, this is a case where every single router is gonna be different, so you're gonna have to go looking at your ISP router settings to figure out how to set that up on yours. But if you're gonna go that route, I would actually assign your router a reserved IP address just to ensure that it'll never change as long as you keep your router. Now, if you ever get a new router, you're gonna to need to change that IP reservation setting to reflect that change. But anyway, let's just say that's not the case for you. Your router is the last device in the chain before it reaches your ISP and you're still not connected directly to the public internet. And then unfortunately you are behind a carrier grade NAT implementation and you're gonna to need to reach out to your ISP and ask how you could opt out of that. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.